It's going to be Sunset Over Water. And this is, they label it as a picturesque game by Steve Finn, Beth Sobel, and Eduardo Barra. So this is a wonderful player game. It says it plays in about 20 minutes for ages 8 and up. Um, I think these are cards. Cause, yep, these cards go with it. So I received this from Eduardo himself um, as part of it after we did a stream together. And so I believe these are bonus cards. Ex yep, expansion, like mini expansion. I'll make sure it goes in. Yep, mini expansion. And then an advertisement card for another one of their games. So, from Pencil First Games, Design with Passion, Pencil First. So, go check them out. Facebook.com, Pencil First Games, or Twitter. If you like what you see here. Um, I'm going to set this expansion to the side. Over here, we'll get to it in a moment. But first, we need to open up this game. Like we talked about, it's going to be a one to four player game. About 20 minutes, ages 8 and up. Expecting a lot of cards and a couple of wooden meeples style components again I've seen this know what it's about so at least I can talk about some of the things I see in this as I reveal them okay so first thought we have our rule book uh, again it gives the credits for design and art and stuff on, on the front of it. The components right here, it's gonna list, and we're looking for cards of different types. Uh, the tokens, which are player uh, tokens, uh, solo variant cards and reference cards as well. Set up very clear with a guide. Talks about gameplay, planning, as this game does take some general planning, so if you haven't played before, you can. If what you do in one turn, and especially to the beginning, can mess with your late game turns if you don't pay attention to what you're doing. Now, it won't completely mess you up, or I don't, or make it impossible for you to win. Just the more you know at the beginning, the more helpful it is. So it's giving you tips right off the bat, so you know what you're doing. And I do. Uh, describes the different phases of a turn and around and how you're doing it how you're getting points by the end of the round and what you do for it uh, then we got uh, Wonderlust which is solo play rules back here a uh, full on rule setup rules gameplay and everything it's very clear how it works and then you can do final scoring for a solo and see how well you did and, and credits again. First off, top of thing, we get a lovely postcard. Very picturesque indeed. And so you could actually throw a stamp on this and send it to someone if you wanted to. So I can do it without it glaring. What kind of a a sunset over water, as the name of the game implies. Very nice. So I like to just keep that in the box, keep hold of it. So we're gonna have some decks of cards pulling out of here. We're gonna have our wooden components. We've got some more cards, which I believe this was the solos, and then our small cards as well. And a plastic form uh, formed insert that held all those things in place from small cards to regular size cards of different types and a place for all of the, the individual worker uh, player component so I'm going to dump out right now we'll show on our close-up view the close-up view we have these four player marker tokens. So if you look at them at the right angle, correct angle, they're actually a person leaning back, relaxing, and 
than sketching the sunset. Because in this game, we are essentially artists going out to sketch sunsets. And so we're moving around finding the best sunsets to score points. These fit right in the box into these slots. Or sh I believe they do. Hopefully they're not too tall to fit. Maybe they're supposed to lean like that. There we go. Oh, because they're supposed to lean at that angle. There we go. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll start with that small package and let's look at those solo cards real quick. This is a game I have not played solo, so these solos are in one of those resealable envelope style packages. Uh, so again, advertisement for that other game. There's oh, an advertisement card for, are these all advertisement cards? Maybe they are, I thought the solo cards were not, maybe they're not. Because we have an advertisement card for arguably one of my favorite uh, games, Role Player, from Thunderworks. Yeah, so back when, yeah, you can tell this is older because of how few games they have advertised on this. And at that point, there's only Monsters and Minions expansion available for Role Player. Now you got Friends and Familiars, you got Role Player Adventures and such. Another card, Dr. Finn Games. So drfins.com, and then this is a card, Beth Sobel illustration. So, basically, almost like a business card for Beth Sobel. That showing off her, some of her um, abilities, and then kind of her name and stuff right there. So let's get back to the actual game. I'm going to start with small cards. Hopefully they don't glare too much. Okay, I can see it. It's on the edge of the cards right here. The start of Quick Tear. It's not the easiest to see, but I see the rounded edge. There we go. Start it. Rip it. Okay. First, we're going to start here. So, we got different colored backs to some of these. So, we have four different colors. These are for the four, up to four players that can play. Uh, black, green, orange, purple. On these, uh, we're gonna have basically times, because during the game, artists will wake up at certain times, and this, oh, hello, Kentucky Fried Dice. Hello, friends, happy Friday indeed. Uh, thank you for lurking and stopping by. Hope you're doing well today. Right now we're opening Sunset Over Water. So each of these cards, so a player gets a, hand, uh, a deck of these cards, will draw so many per round and choose, choose to play one face down. Everyone reveals at the same time and then basically they determine a turn order. So depending if you play one earlier or later, depends on how fast you move during the game. And then also tells you basically how you can move on that turn and then how many of the sunset cards you can end up picking up. So depending if you want to go later, if you want to go earlier, some allow you to pick up a lot more. Uh, they might restrict your movement, but allow you to move farther. There's good variation in how these cards work. Um, but the way I talked about uh, depends on when you play them. Because 
the cards you don't play, you can potentially end up getting back and playing later in the game. Now we got some of these cards. These are commission-based bonus cards that can be used during the game in certain ways. I'd have to look up and verify how many are used or how they're used. Uh, it may be that each person gets each, uh, one of these secretly, and so you get bonus points. But those are these small mini cards, which fit right into the box right there. I'm going to open the ones that have the reference cards in them. Again, quick uh, terror plastic. So we have four reference cards. Uh, front and back are different. Uh, it talks about a day and the rounds, basically how those work. Uh, playing a card, what that means, cleaning up at the end of the round, how the game ends, and final scoring. So everything you need to know is right there in front of you as you play. Go to the box. Now we got... I think these are solo-based cards because that looks like the artwork that talked about in Solo in the rule book. Uh, Ranger Station cards. Uh, very calming uh, landscape cabin cottage style artwork right there even though it's not sunset it still works you can have a cottage that looks over a sunset over water okay and this is a solo card um, solo journal uh, planning card kind of you put it I guess you put a card on it plan Looks like it's double-sided, potentially the same on both sides. It's nice. Okay, and now we got some more cards. Let's see what color these backs are. If there's a difference. Yep. I'm gonna open the other pack before we go through these since the backs of these match some of those. See what that means. Okay, so more of that dark green, dark green. Okay, so we got three different backed styles. We we'll start with the smallest stack. Okay, so some different. Uh, I believe these are round scoring bonuses of different types. So, for example. You can score two points, um, be the last person to paint a landscape with exactly one feature for the round. So the landscapes, which we'll hit up in a minute, have a different number of features on them needed to paint to score them. Uh, be the last person to move uh, horizontally. Uh, there's also like diagonally for that. Last person to not sell a landscape. Uh, so, so you have it around. We're not selling anything. If that was out, that would be good. So you could actually still score something. Be the last person to end the day in a corner landscape. So the game itself lays out cards in a grid system. So if you end up in a corner, that's a scoring option. Be the last person to paint a landscape with exactly two features. So we talked about they could have one or two, potentially more. Be the last person to paint a landscape with exactly three. So again, uh, different landscape number, uh, different features on the landscapes, different scoring options that way. Okay, so now we got the this kind of baby blue backed style card. And these are scoring options to turn in landscapes for. So they're going to show different features that you uh, that you need to be able to score. Kind of these are basically commissions in a way your artwork so you might maybe it needs a mountain or it needs water or flowers or a waterfall potentially or maybe it just needs the sun so it's gonna have different stuff like that if it has a question mark that's like anything so maybe a sun and anything or this is just one of the, those symbols this is uh, basically I think it's 
two different ones. So you want something with that and then one of anything. More cards like that. And then of course the top of these cards shows the scores. So like, oh you want a single feature water and then two of anything type card. Or three different cards that have at least a mountain on it. Or the different features like uh, the various types. And then last, uh, well, not last because we'll have the expansion look at. We have all of these uh, green backed cards. These are going to be the landscape cards that create a uh, tile system in the game. And each round they essentially refresh, so you end up drawing more of these. But this is all of that wonderful artwork that Vessel is so well known for doing landscaping, landscape and nature style artwork that is just wonderful. So they also talk about the features like we mentioned, some like two, three, one. But okay, yeah, it shows a waterfall, it shows a sunset. Sunset, it has flowers in it and a mountain. So it's going to kind of represent what you see in the drawing. If I remember correctly, each of these illustrations is actually different. Like that is a lot of different illustrations. So like we got a single one. Primarily it's water, mountain focused. But all of these different artwork uh, cards that she did for this game is amazing. Like you, you could take this artwork and frame it and not even have to play the game. It's so great. I know I'm going through this quick, but there's just so many good ones. Okay, so okay, so I'm I'm getting to a point I'm seeing repeats now. I think quick check. These look to be the same thickness and stack. Yep. So Yep, same. So it looks like there's probably two copies of each landscape card but when they're shuffled together coming out randomly you're not really going to notice but again that's still a ton of wonderful pieces of artwork so 30 different ones so that's still very impressive for, for this can't complain about that at all so a lot of wonderful artwork. Gameplay is very simple. It's supposed to play in about 20 minutes. Let's see what this mini expansion adds. So it says, get inspired with these 10 Muse cards. Set up each uh, daily player Muse card at the start of the game. And the Muse score is basically additional scoring. And so these to differentiate that they are the expansion. Every different color backing. It says there's 10 of, there uh, should be about 10 of these. Uh, show scoring options with different types of landscape. Looks like each of these has three on it. Uh, you add up the total number of matching features on their commission cards. So the commission cards are the cards that you have already earned points on. And so if you're those cards that have matching features to these, that's extra points beyond a typical game. So if you like to increase uh, the score range in a game and how many points you can get, this expansion would do that for you. And that is Sunset Over Water. Nice, another nice small box game.